Hello everyone, my name is Sibyl Hunzimana. I'm super excited to be able to connect with you all here today online. Um, I'm 16 years old and I'm a Kid Spirit contributor from Haiti. I've been writing for the magazine for about a year now and in the fall, I'm really excited to be attending the University of Toronto <clears throat> where I'll be studying literature and hopefully continue to pursue writing. Today, I'm delighted to be joined by Joel Sartore who is an award-winning photographer, speaker, author, and conservationist. Joel is also the creator of The Photo Arc, which is a really cool project that's lasted about 18 years so far. He started it in 2006, um, in which he's photographed over 15,000 different species to raise awareness of the extinction crisis, which is obviously something that is very important. Um, I'm honored to be interviewing him here today to learn more about his work, and I hope people watching at home can learn a little bit more as well. I'm Joel Sartori, the founder of National Geographic Photo Arc and Video Arc. My goal is to document every species in human care around the world. That's mammals, birds, amphibians, reptiles, fish, and invertebrates. I do this at zoos, aquariums, and wildlife sanctuaries. More than 800 locations over the past 17 years. Each and every one of these animals is amazing. All are worth saving and deserve our protection. Today we have nearly 15,000 species on board the Ark. Each is a living work of art and deserves our full attention right now, while there's still time. I'm doing everything I can to get the world to pay attention and save them all. Now, how about you? Well, one more thing that I really wanted to ask you was um, what, you know, the average person or even anyone watching here today can do to address the extinction crisis or raise awareness of it um, and how we might even be contributing negatively to it without even knowing. Great question. I always say start at home, start in your own backyard. Let's talk about planting native plants and nectar bearing plants to help support bees and butterflies. Those, that's a huge deal. It's cheap, it's fun, it's good for the air you breathe, it's good for the water people drink because those native plants cannot tolerate herbicides. They can't tolerate insecticides, you know, like let's, let's start planting native gardens, native plant gardens. So at our office, we have done just that on the sides of our office and in the front yard facing the street. We have planted native prairie with nectar bearing plants. We have tons of native bees and butterflies coming in every year. It's very exciting. We have rabbits that use it. We have fox that use it. We have signs in there, like the size of a house for sale sign. We have four of them and they're very colorful and beautifully designed by our office staff. And it says prairie in progress. Then the next one is look close, see what you see. Do you see butterflies and bees? You know, it's like, it's all these things stating why and then we mow around the, right around the edge towards the sidewalk so the city can see it is it is intentional. It's not just that we don't mow our lawn, right? But it's full of color and flower and birds come by and use it. And we, we really want the public to learn about this so they can do it. So the number one thing is if you have a house with a lawn, quit pouring poison or quit letting your parents pour poison all over the ground. No, don't, let's not use fertilizers, insecticides, herbicides, fungicides. That's bad for everybody. Stuff during a rain moves out of your yard and moves eventually into rivers and streams and other people are drinking it. Forget about the wildlife for a while. Forget about the possibility of creating frogs with three eyes or four legs. Let's just talk about humans drinking this stuff. It's nasty. So that's no number one thing. Convert your yard to be more native. 
That's a big thing. If you don't have a yard, let's say you have an apartment with a balcony with flower pots, you can bring in pollinating insects to, to nectar bearing plants in those flower pots. Just figure out what's native to your area. Not the ornamental kind that are so popular that are from a different continent, native plants to your area. And any garden center would know that and sell those, right? So that's something great you can do. What else can you do? Recycle, watch what, and watch how you spend your money and how your parents spend their money. Every time you break out your purse or your wallet, you are saying to a real, realtor, uh, you're, saying to, you're saying to a retailer, I approve of this. Do it again and again and again, right? So if you're buying something that's really energy intensive, let's say a lot of red meat, or or you're buying a gas guzzling vehicle, uh, maybe not so good, right? Maybe you need to think about your your carbon footprint. Uh, is your home insulated well? There's one that pays you right back and makes you money every month. Saved money is earned money. We insulated this old, old drafty home of ours when we moved in 25 years ago. And our insulation and window stripping and all that paid for itself within eight months. We've been making money for nearly 25 years by saving fossil fuel from leaking out from all the heat and cool. So basic things. And but your but how you spend your money, that's a big deal. Your money is either making the world better or making it worse. So buying sustainably produced crops uh, and also you know, durable goods, hard goods, sustainably produced, that's a big deal. And it takes some thought. You have to research. But I know it's possible because we've done it. Yeah, it's all about setting your mind to it. Like you said, this idea of just, you know, knowing that you have to make a change or knowing that you want to do something and just doing it because it's important. It's really, really important. And Super I think it's, it's, it's also amazing to see like the difference that you can make. Uh, what you said about you know, planting your gardens and, you know, inter reintroducing native species into your front yard, for example. It's really, really, it sounds simple, but it's, it's, I think it's something that's really important. Even at, at my house back in Haiti, my parents have done amazing things to our garden. Um, and in a place that once saw very few birds and bugs and whatever, it's now flourishing. Every morning we wake up to the sound of bird song and various different bugs chirping. And it's just amazing to think that, you know, you have that power in your hands. Obviously it's That's not right. all your own power. That's you right. You have the, the yeah. power to, to, to facilitate that. Yeah. They're waiting for us. The insects, especially yeah. they're waiting, you know, uh, the, you know, the other thing that's really fun and interesting to do is know that no matter what you're interested in, there's likely already a group or an organization doing just that. And so if you can volunteer for them, become indispensable, you know, like we can't live, we can't live without them. Um, that's a good way to secure a long-term future as well. If you can find a group that's that's doing great things that you agree with, that you really admire, then team up with them. It could be at the local zoo or aquarium. It could be at a at a pet rescue center. It could be at a food bank. It could be just any number of things. I mean, it doesn't have to be environmental. It could be it could be anything. It could be helping with with um, low interest loans that in a financial institution you'd be helping with uh, rent subsidized housing. It could be helping to build housing or clean up a neighborhood. It could be any number of things like just figure out what you love. And I guarantee you in your area, there are probably people that are thinking the same way and are already doing it. And if not, you could start it. It's really a great way to live. It's very fun and very satisfying. 